Hi everybody, it's Raina at the Closet Crafter Studio. Um, excuse my voice, I have a little bit of a cold today. Um, so what I would like to do is go over how to start junk journaling, kind of what I did, um, things that you can use, and I'm gonna do it in a step-by-step -step process. Um, so you have everything in, in one spot that kind of gives you an idea of how to get started because I've gotten this question a lot and I see it a lot on Facebook groups, you know, just what do I do? How do I get started? And um, this is how I got started. Um, I wanted a summer writing project for me and my daughter and I had seen, you know, junk journals on my Pinterest and I thought they were so cool. And I just decided that's what we were gonna do for our summer writing project is create our own summer book. And that's what we did. So I am gonna walk you guys through every step of the process of creating your own junk journal. And it does not have to be expensive or fancy and you don't need a lot of stuff to do it. Um, I've built up my collection since then and I do have a lot more um, things now than I did then but starting out I had basic book pages basic paper um I didn't ink anything because I didn't know to ink anything I had never heard of ephemera um so we just you know it was our own and that's kind of how you know the most creative parts of it happen is just figuring out what you like and what works for you and realizing that you don't need everything that someone else has to make your own junk journal. Okay, so the first step if you're making a junk journal out of an altered book is picking a book that you like, whether it's the size that you like or the cover that you like or what have you. Um, and there's two ways to do the spine. I'm gonna do my preferred way of doing the spine, which is a hidden spine. And that's just what I like to do. I do have some in my Etsy shop that do not have a hidden spine because I just thought that it, you know, was prettier for the spine to be exposed in those journals. But most of my journals have a hidden spine, so that's what I'm gonna do. So the first step, if you're making an altered book, is to pick out a book that you like. I love using these old Reader Digest books, um, but some of them can be very old, so you have to kind of watch out for the um, oh, for the shape that the cover is in, and depending on what you want to do with it. This is a beautiful cover. I'm not going to cover it with fabric. I really love um, the book the way it looks and there's no tears there's no dents it's got a beautiful color on it still there might be a couple spots like right here where there's a little bit of discoloration but it's nothing huge it's nothing overly noticeable and it's nothing that really detracts from the cover so i'm going to keep this just the way it is i love the cover i will add a tutorial on um how you can add a cover to a book or um if i'm fabric covering something i usually do an old box or a recycled box um not not a beautiful book like this um so the first step is you have to gut your book and basically all you're gonna do is take out all the pages um and i use the pages you'll see in my altered playing card tutorial i use pages from a reader's digest book um, i use them to make these little bags i use them for all sorts of things um collaging you name it i, I really don't throw much of anything away if it's usable i will use it and the pictures in here sometimes there are very cool pictures that I will cut out and use um, as I will back them with some tea dye paper and use them as journal cards. So just some interesting illustrations in here.
That one's pretty. So all you need to do to get started in um, emptying or gutting out your book is um, some sort of craft knife. This is the one that I have. I've had it for ever. I think I've, I've I probably have never even changed the blade on it, to be honest with you. Um, you have to be careful though, because the tip is very sharp and you do not want to poke through your spine accidentally. So all I do is I open it up to this front cover and I go down and at a slight angle and I just cut and I'm very careful. I use small shallow strokes. And you don't have to worry about it being a little messy because we will cover it all up. You, you won't see any of the messiness. And again, short, shallow strokes because you do not want to accidentally poke through your spine because then you can't use your spine. At least not the way it looks. So. Some of these have more glue than others. And it can take a little while to separate if, if there's quite a bit of glue. This one has quite a bit of glue. It's not as old as some of my other ones. Make sure we're still good. I almost cut through. Almost. Almost. Gotta be very careful. It does take a little bit more work when you're doing an altered book versus, say, like a cardboard box, especially if you want to keep the cover as nice as possible. If you were going to cover the cover with fabric, a little cut in the spine would, would not be a big deal. As long as it isn't somewhere you were going to, you know, be sewing in signatures. Okay, so that came off pretty easily. Once I, once you get it started, it comes off pretty quick. So now I'm just going to flip it to the back and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open it up. And right here where this crease is, you can, it, you can, if you put your finger there, it almost tears away a little bit without even needing to use the craft knife. So right there where that crease is. Short, shallow strokes. And we'll pop off. There we go. It is literally that easy. And you can see my spine is still in great shape. And here are all the pages that I will use for something else. So I'm gonna put that to the side and talk about how to do a hidden spine which is not nearly as hard as you think it is. So I'm gonna grab some cardstock. And I might grab a piece of cardboard. So I have a piece of cardstock and a piece of cardboard. Um, I like to use the cardstock just to kind of reinforce the cardboard a little bit because sometimes I have a thinner cardboard. This one is a pretty thick piece of cardboard. It came off of um, a tablet of graph paper or something. Um, so I'm going to measure my spine and then I'm going to cut my cardboard to fit and then trim it as needed. And this is what I will be sewing my signatures to. 
So instead of sewing my signatures in and puncturing through the spine, I'm gonna sew my signatures to this cardboard and then I will glue this into the spine once the signatures are sewn in. So let me measure this. This is about an inch and a half. by seven and a half. Seven and a half, right? Yes, an inch and a half by seven and a half. Now this is very thick cardboard. I probably don't even need to reinforce with cardstock, but I will just be safe. And I will actually cut two pieces of cardstock. One I will use to glue onto here, and then one I will use as a template for um, spacing out my signatures. All right, that came off pretty nicely. And I have a small, oh, mess. I have a smaller paper trimmer, so I'm gonna measure how much I need to take off. This is nine, so an inch and a half. Okay. So next, I'm just gonna put this in here. It fits nicely and I'm going to make sure my book closes nicely with it in here. So I'm going to pop it down, make sure it's really in there because I'm also going to be adding fabric so you won't see anything not pretty. So it fits beautifully. All right, so it fits nicely. So I've got that cut. I'm going to cut two pieces of cardstock. One I'm going to glue onto my spine piece and one I'm going to use for a template for sewing in my signatures and I'll, you'll, you'll see how I do that as well, just so I know where to place everything. One and a half. And you're going to take off an inch. And that fits nicely. And now all I'm going to do is take a piece of scrap fabric. And I'm actually going to glue the scrap fabric over my hidden spine so that when you're looking in between the signatures, you see this pretty fabric that... Um, is there instead of this so and I chose this green because I don't know if you can see the cover but it's got a dark green spine with lighter green boxes and the front is kind of like a green like a grass green and, and yellow color so I thought that this piece of fabric would work just fine for that it does not have to be um, a super wide piece of fabric. I just want it wide enough that it will go in here and go over just a little bit. So, and then the edges will be covered with paper. All right. So I've got this, the spine done. I am going to Go ahead and glue this piece of cardstock to it. And I just use Mod Podge. I don't have a lot of problems with warping. Um, if I see notice that some warping is happening, I will just stick whatever I'm gluing under something heavy for a little while. It's not a big deal. And it doesn't take much. It's 
So sometimes the warping happens because too much glue is being used to begin with. So I hope you guys can see, let me make sure that this is where y'all can see and I'm not doing too much off camera. I'm going to glue this right on down. All right, so now I'm going to cut my fabric to fit. So I don't want it very wide like i said and it doesn't have to be very straight either because you're not going to see the edges at all you won't see the edges so as long as it's long enough to drape over a little bit you're you're not going to see the edges so it doesn't really matter if they're perfectly straight so then i want to cut it just a little bit longer on each end because i'm going to fold it down so that you can't see the cardboard from the top or the bottom either. So that should be big enough. I'm gonna grab my book again. This isn't glued yet. I'm just gonna pop my spine in there. And as you can see, there's plenty of space still. And it will be fine. Right. So I'm going to, I'm just going to glue this. All right. I'm just going to lay this down the pretty side up. make sure it's somewhat in the middle and trim this end just a little bit it's a little bit longer than we need all right now one thing that I do want to mention is I do make sure that when I fold these in, I try to keep the fold as straight as possible because I don't want any fabric peeking up out of the book. So, and if it's folded kind of wonky, it'll, it'll, you'll be able to see it. And I don't want you to be able to see it. So what I'm gonna do is glue this down. Now I've got both ends glued down and I haven't glued down these little pieces yet because I want to make sure I glue them down in a way that's going to keep them from popping um, up over the edge of the book. So I'm going to grab my cover. I'm going to lay this down and I'm just going to make sure that the creases that I've made are good and that you're not going to see any fabric popping up and I don't think you are I think it's good so I'm going to go ahead and glue those little loose pieces down And then I'm going to mark which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom of my spine. I'm going to make that very clear so I don't accidentally mess it up.
I don't want to use too much glue here, um, especially the Mod Podge because the Mod Podge has a ten tendency to dry a little hard and um, I don't want it to add a bunch of bulkiness or it'll um, mess up how the book closes or how things are layered. I don't want them to layered and look lumpy. So just using a little bit. And remember, I'm not gluing this down yet. I'm just making sure that I have a spine, a reinforced spine that will work for my cover. No fabric there and no fabric there. All right, see, so now when you look at the book and the signatures are sewn in, you're going to see this pretty green fabric instead of, you know, cardboard or whatever. All right, so that is all I'm going to do for this video. I just wanted to show you how I make those two things really quickly, how to um, gut your book and prep your spine for making a hidden for hidden signatures. So in the next video, we're going to talk about um, creating the signatures and um, what I do to prepare my signatures before I sew them into the spine. So I hope this was informative and gave you a little bit of information on how to start journaling or creating a junk journal. So thanks for watching and happy crafting, everybody. Bye.